Hey guys, Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Today I'm going to walk you through the hydraulic setup on this 4052R. Several weeks ago I had a comment from a viewer asking about part numbers, the process, etc. And they said they'd like to see a video detailing how this tractor was ultimately set up and I thought that was a good idea so here we are. So real quick disclaimer or kind of overarching note about this video. I'm not gonna walk through all the various combinations that are out there as far as what kits you need to buy and how to set it up on multiple different tractors. I'm only gonna talk specifically about the part numbers and the process I used on this 4052R. So if you happen to have this exact make and model, then you're in luck. If not, then I would say search the web, consult your dealer, figure out the parts that you need, but this should at least give you a general idea of the process and what's involved when adding hydraulics to your tractor. Another quick piece of advice when you start to order parts for, uh, for adding hydraulics like this to a tractor, I know a lot of people, once they figure out the part that they would want, would be tempted to just find whatever website they can that might sell it the cheapest and save a few bucks, have it shipped right to their house and be done with it. I, however, would urge you to work through your local dealer. A, they will help you figure out the parts that you need. Every tractor is a little bit different and there are various configurations that could alter the parts list that you need and they'll help you work through that and then secondarily if you do run into any issues while you're installing and I do urge you to try to install it yourself because they can be pricey and I'll tell you the details about what they were going to charge me in a minute if you run into issues and you haven't purchased the parts through your local dealer chances are when you call them up asking for help or questions about how the install should be handled they might be a little bit standoffish and not help you through the process but at least if you're a paying customer and willing to do business with them they might be a little bit more willing to help you with the process all right so now that we have all the disclaimers pieces of advice and all that good stuff out of the way let's get into the meat potatoes of this video okay so what setup do i have i have a 2016 john deere 4052r hydrostatic transmission open station tractor those are the details that your dealer is going to want whenever you're working to put hydraulics onto your tractor because all those different items play into the different parts you might need. So what setup do I have on here? Well, when I first bought this tractor, there were no additional hydraulics, just enough for the loader and nothing on the rear. So I have added the third SCV which is incorporated here in the thumb control to help you run a grapple. And then the fourth and fifth SCVs, or selective control valves, which are actually with the two levers here to run remotes or hydraulics, whatever you want to call them, on the rear. And I typically use my rear remotes for my hydraulic top link and then my hydraulic side link, or also known as a top and tilt kit. And then on occasion, I also run that uh, hydraulic barge wagon there with it as well. So for the the third SCV selective control valve to run the grapple. It's the thumb control here on the loader control which sends fluid to the front of the tractor to open and close my grapple. And so you can see the lines dump off right there and then hook up to the grapple. In addition to the thumb control when you install this thing you're also going to get a switch over here on the right which is a continuous flow switch now what the continuous flow does is when you enable it it continuously sends fluid through the circuit so almost like power beyond it's constantly moving fluid so when you enable that it'd be for something like maybe a rotary brush up front you just click the button and then it will continue pushing fluid without having to actuate the thumb control i'll demonstrate it as best i can with the grapple real quick so right now you'll see that the grapple is closed and if I push this lever, if I push this rocker switch up, it will start to send fluid and make the grapple open and you'll hear that tractor then bear down on the relief valve and want to continue moving fluid. So I won't push the thumb control. Opening, now you hear it on the relief valve, so obviously disable. So that's a quick demonstration of what continuous flow does for the third SCV. And this third selective control valve, or third SCV if you will, is what's known as electric over hydraulic or electrohydraulic. So it's not like a typical manual 
valve that you can feather on or off. You, when you push the thumb control, it's either open or closed. And so some guys I know have been concerned with the knocking noise that they hear when the solenoid opens and closes, but that noise is natural. It's a very abrupt process. You can't feather electric hydraulic electrohydraulics on like you can with a loader um, or other manual valve. And I think you know what I mean. If you're you know you're pulling on your loader, you can you can feather it up real slow or fast, but that's not the case with electro over hydraulic or electro hydraulic. Okay, on to the part numbers. So I have a little cheat sheet here, so apologies for veering away from the camera a little bit. So three parts that I had to install to get this set up for my grapple anyway. So starting with BLV10764. Now this part was about $975. And this is the heart of what we're installing. It's the solenoid that is actually opened and closed. And I'll run through the other parts real quick and then we'll briefly talk about installation. The second piece I had to add was BLV10456. And I think that part was about $390. And what that is, that's a uh, wiring harness that you have to have in place in order to be able to use the thumb control. Now I do know that tractors uh, I believe 2016 or 17 and after in the fall they have this automatically added from the factory so again when you're working with your dealer they'll be able to help you figure out whether you need to add this load center assembly or not and then the last part was BW16414 and that part was a uh, $415 so as you guys can see these aren't cheap and then you add on uh, installation from the dealership and it just becomes a little bit too much to swallow so um, but anyway, that part is the lines that run from the mid mount point where your other loader <clears throat> where your other loader controls are to the front of the tractor. I'll try to get video of what these three parts are if, if I can see them or not. So my dealer wanted roughly eight hundred dollars to make this installation happen, which I just wasn't ready to add into the price of everything here. So I have to do it myself, and it wasn't terrible. And I'll kind of briefly walk you guys through what that process is. So the brains of the operation for this are to install that cylinder I was talking about, which is tucked behind this panel here and I'm not going to take it off I'm not it's if you google the part number you can find the, the what the big solenoid looks like it's roughly about that height and it bolts onto the tractor but the the process involves taking this tire off taking the side panel off here to give you access to the hydraulics and then you essentially have to unbolt a few uh, steel hydraulic lines put a couple new ones in open up a plug or two on the solenoid um, it's not terrible guys it just takes some time an extra set of hands is very helpful throughout that process but it's it's not that bad it just takes a little bit of time figuring out i mean i think i spent more time trying to figure out where the lines go because the instructions from john deere aren't that great so search the forum search greentractortalk.com there are a couple good pieces out there i'll see if i can't find them and link them down here below my video some guys really detailed the installation but i'm here more just to help you guys along with parts and kind of show you the setup that i have and to the right of the seat, I guess to the left of the seat you're sitting in it, this is the load center assembly harness. Um, if you have this already on your tractor, if you go out and look and you have this box already mounted your tractor, chances are you don't need to order the load center assembly for your tractor because you already have it. But that is what then runs the electrical cables up to uh, this switch panel here where you can do continuous flow and actually make your electro over hydraulic work. Because without it, you can't. And then the third part I mentioned are the lines that run from midpoint right here. Um, so the the main kit you buy, and here are the two new steel lines that I was referring to that, well, maybe we can go up here and see. You can see kind of where they run off to up there. That's what that solenoid is. But here are the two new steel lines that come through. And the kit you buy, not not using the third, not using the third piece I was talking about, only gets you to here. So then this becomes the new the line kit I was talking about that take it to the front runs up alongside with the other lines, adds a couple steel lines here on the inside of your loader and down to the front. So it's a little pricey for what it, for what it is, but I went ahead and went the whole nine yards. So if you wanted to cut a little bit of cost out of your uh, build or setup, you could just kind of make your own lines and you know just do flexible lines the whole way up. And so like I said, 800 bucks from the dealer to install that. It took me and a buddy, we did it in probably an afternoon and I could probably do it in half the time now having done it once before so not a terribly difficult install just take some time understanding what you're working with but if you're good at wrenching on things 
it's not complicated. You can do it, guys. I promise you that. So that is a very brief summary of the third SCV and the installation process. Leave questions below. I'll answer them as best I can. Like I said, I'm not trying to give a detailed installation process of all this, but just really want to give you guys the part numbers. Now, I will say, if you're out there online searching, you might run across some um, information from deer that is incorrect. I know that when I was searching, I ran across, looks like BLV10043 as one of the parts that I needed for the third SCV. It's actually incorrect per my dealer, and obviously it is incorrect because I installed different parts that work. So there's some literature out there that might steer you in the wrong direction, so I urge you guys, get a hold of your dealer. So now on to the fourth and fifth SCV. So these are here to the right, and they're manually actuated valves, so these levers up and down. Um, there's two of them. And then the one closest to me, actually, you can see if I push it down, it has a float mode. So if you put it down and you wanted your hydraulic top link to float, um, if you don't have a check valve on it anyway, that's something you can do. But I use this mostly for that uh, barge wagon I have when I'm dumping. So I uh, you know, drop it down and float because it's a single action cylinder, so there's no return line for it. So that's what I use my float for mostly. But anyway, that's... For another video now personally i thought the installation for the fourth and fifth hydraulic were easier than the third um, you're not really dealing with as much electrical there is a switch which i'll show you that allows for continuous flow like the third but and maybe it's partly because i had you know been in there and worked and had the tractor kind of apart to work on the third so maybe that's just why i thought it was easier but it didn't seem near as bad to me now the parts for the fourth and fifth that you're going to need are BLV10050. And that's the actual fourth and fifth unit. And that's about $900. And then with the setup I had in my tractor, here's one of those instances where the dealer helped me figure out what I needed because I never would have known I needed this. Apparently, having the third SCV already on here required that I need a different oil line than what would have come with the kit. So I needed LVA19247. And that part was 120 bucks. So looking at about a little over $1,000 plus tax for this one here. But you're going to save your seven, $800 in installation. So. so this kit's a little less involved. You can see you got your two levers that go on here. Um, this little plate gets added. This plate gets added to push your light away and create a room on this side for the valve to sit. And then you got a matching one on the other side to make it, pair, or make it uniform. Here's the, the valve that gets mounted to the tractor um, and then this casing and then you have your obviously your ports that you plug in. Like I said, this install didn't seem near as bad. These are the two lines that run from the tractor hydraulics up to the valve. If you kind of follow those through, they snake down around and then um, plug into the main hydraulic system down there. So yeah, it involves taking the tire off again. Not a big deal unless you have fluid in your tires. Um, but generally it's just a lot of bolting and wrenching on things. You'll spend probably more time figuring out what you're supposed to be doing than actually doing it. Now, just like the third SCV, I don't know which one it is, the fourth or fifth, but this also has a continuous flow option. So there's your switch, and I believe the process is to kick one of these things up with this switch on and it'll lock it into a continuous flow mode. So um, again, I don't have a ton of examples of what you would be using continuous flow for, but if you were to want to hook up a, a log splitter, for instance, for example, you needed to have flow to your log splitter back there, and then you had a valve that you control on your log splitter, that would be one option of what you would use continuous flow for on the rear. So that's not an in-depth installation video, but hopefully that can be helpful for some of you guys out there who might be considering adding a third or fourth and fifth hydraulic to your tractor. Uh, to recap, I think it's about $1,800 before tax for the parts alone on the third SCV and then about $1,000 or so before tax on the 4th and 5th. And it's been several years since I installed the kits on this, on this tractor, so I'll do my best to dig up the threads I was using from the forums and link those below so you have an idea of at least the installation process on a 4052R. Like I said, I don't have much knowledge of what other setups might require or what other parts be required for other setups. So if you happen to have a 4052R, then this is your ticket. If not, hopefully this is somewhat helpful for some of you guys out there. So if you have other questions, please leave them below. I'll try to do my best to answer them or at least get you to someone who can. Like I said, the forums are a fantastic resource if you haven't been out there on some of them. Green Tractor Talk is where we're at and we're always finding knowledge and sharing knowledge there. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check back for more videos. Ring that little bell so you get notifications when you do post new videos. And I look forward to hearing from some of you guys about what setup you ultimately end up putting on your tractor. Right now, I'm going to go wipe off this grease that I just stuck my hand in. See you guys. So the part numbers for the 4th and 5th are BLV LVA BW 10760456 16414 10050 LVA 19247 No, they're not.